How's it guys? Steve here, aka Dreaded Nomad, Big Island of Hawaii, and today I'm gonna find out just how dirty my hair really is. So the reasoning for the deep clean is going to be the obvious, you know. Your hair is, you know, in the elements all the time. Smoke, dust, you know, dead skin, uh, dirt, fucking lint, you know. Okay, so you got soap and you have residue-free soap. Even residue-free soap is not residue-free 100% because it's just pretty much impossible to have anything be 100% anything. So, after a while of using tiny bits of residue-free soap, which I didn't know, probably the first 8-9 months, I kind of just glopped it all on the top of my head like a dumbass, but... You live and you learn, and I learn. So when you wash your hair and you have dreads, you more so put the soap on your scalp because your scalp is what gets oily, and then the soapy water is gonna run down through your dreads and pretty much clean the rest of it, and then you rinse for as long as you can. Most of it does run out of your hair. So yeah, pretty much you're gonna want a deep clean. It's at your discretion, I mean like, everyone I've seen do it anywhere from the first month all the way to, you know, three years or something. Um, Maybe certain people's situations are different, you know, maybe you're working in an environment where your hair is going to get just greasy all day, disgusting, and maybe you're going to do it multiple times a year. What you're going to need to do this, you might be wondering. So you guys might be wondering what you're going to need to do this. Well, obviously, take all this other shit out. So obviously, a bowl, a bin, a bucket, a tote, a pan of some sorts, um, definitely make it enough where your whole hair is going to fit in here ideally all the way up to the scalp since you're going to kind of want to massage the hair, your dreads, and your scalp as it's soaking. So since I don't work at a salon, I have one of these and I still need to cut out a neck hole or whatever the fuck I would call it. So a bowl. Thing number two. Thing number two you're going to need. Baking soda. Very cheap white powder, great for breaking up oils. So this is going to be the compound in this mixture that is going to break up the waxy solid residues and oils and all that kind of fun stuff that you have in your hair and it's going to turn it into a liquid. So this is why you soak for a half hour. It's going to break down all the nasties in your hair. Now here's the fun part. The essential oil adding. You can add whatever essential oils you feel um, I'm only going to add tea tree oil because that's the only one that I have. And usually they're kind of expensive, but I didn't buy this one. Someone had left it somewhere and gave it to me, so I have this. So I have 100% tea tree oil, and what tea tree oil is going to do is going to be good for bacteria, fungus, um, a bug repellent, I've heard. Um, you know, I got attacked by like a six inch centipede like two months ago, and I. I've been using this all around my room to try to keep it away. I guess the scent is really strong. Um, you can go with rosemary. Rosemary would be very good for irritated scalp, dandruff, itchy scalp, any kind of scalp irritation, and it also smells good, so why not? Tea tree oil. That's in the bin. You might be wondering, where is my citrus? And I'm not buying citrus juice. We live in a farm in Hawaii. It's tropical. They're fruiting right now, so we're about to take a walk. The perks of living in a tropical paradise on an island is that you have a lot of great fruit that just grows everywhere all the time. Not to sidetrack, but here we have some star fruits. We have the tangerine tree. I thought about using tangerines, but I'm not sure they're acidic level. Banana trees. And we have the oranges. So I'm gonna pick an orange. I think I'm gonna do a quarter, fuck. I think I'm gonna do a quarter of an orange and a quarter of a yuzu. The uzu is a Japanese fruit. It's like double the bitterness of a lemon and they're smaller. So, I got a quarter one of those. Alright guys, so now, what you're going to want to do 
is get you some apple cider vinegar and you are not going to put this inside of your mixture while you're soaking this is going to literally be to rinse your hair of all the shit afterwards so what this is going to do it's going to balance out the pH in your hair again this is acidic and the bacteria is going to be an alkaline so your hair is going to be a little off in some pH levels and this is also going to rinse out all the oils from your hair it's going to strip everything out and then you are going to take a normal shower after so all right guys so we got the water right here it's as hot as it could get so now the baking soda measurement wise i don't fucking know from every video i've seen everything i've read it's pretty much just discretion just not too much and I know it's kind of hard to know what too much is when you don't know what the right amount is is too much but I can't see it's a white container with white powder and clear water you know yeah tastes like bacon so that's for damn sure fresh off the farm yes there's pulp and shit going in there I didn't think of that here's some uzu enough let's pretend that's a couple drops here's a nice half hour of laying on the fucking ground oh, fuck. <laughs> this is so awkward pH. Oh. So I guess the trick is not to really rinse your hair in it, but to get every single. Oh fuck, that smells rank. <laughs> but it's gonna get every bit wet. <coughs> <coughs> fuck. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. Hold on, guys. Breathing in through my mouth and nose, the fumes are just. Woo! I hope you can't see me naked on camera. Right, I can't retake this again. So it's going to be a couple hours before my hair is actually dry, and I get to actually see the difference, but I can definitely feel the difference. Um. And with all that being said, and with it being almost 14 months, just take that into factor when I show you what the water looks like. Mm -mm -mm. Holy shit, guys. So I was just about to dump this out, and I was like, oh, damn, it's dirty. Um, You want to talk about sand overload? This is probably the one con of bodyboarding shore break. Or the ocean or beach in general, because... Holy fuck. Like, that is straight sand from like 10 different beaches. Oh my god. And shout out to Joe for recognizing me on Facebook and a page. Thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for the comment. And uh, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you didn't. Also subscribe if you're new and stay subscribed if you're already subscribed because I'm going to have other videos coming out very soon. So stay tuned and I'll see you guys later. Shoots. Bring in the instrumental Rasta.